Hi, I'm here with Karen Russell, and she's the head trainer for the Citadel Canine Society. I love talking to tra uh, dog trainers. You know what? I could spend hours talking about their philosophy. But the main thing is I want to talk to ask her is what does it take for you to evaluate a dog that you're contemplating, uh, it, whether it's good enough to be a service dog? Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we look at for a service dog. It takes a, takes a very special dog, um, definitely not just any dog can do it. So they have to be pretty confident, we call them bomb proof. Um, a big part of being a service dog is public access, so we don't want them to be too startled by loud noises. Uh, they have to be comfortable around children, around other animals. Um, they have to have a really, really solid obedience foundation, which if they don't, for example, when they come to us at Citadel, that's something that we can work on. Um, but we don't want a dog with any severe fear issues or aggression issues, anything like that for sure. Just a very well balanced dog. Can, can I ask you, like, we all know that the service dogs, a lot of them are specific breeds, but if, if it's the right dog and you evaluate them right, is, is I, I'm on the philosophy that a dog is a dog and, you know, we go from there. So are you, are you breed specific or, you know, shelter dogs come with mixed breeds? What's your philosophy on that? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So a lot of Labrador Retrievers and Golden Retrievers tend to be the common breeds used because they're a very good working dog. They like to work with their people. Um, you don't have to use a treat every single time to get them to do a behavior because they just like the job. Yeah. But it's not necessarily... <laughs> there's not necessarily breed biases saying any one dog can't do that job. You know, you could have... Um, a Husky, you could have a German Shepherd, those are dogs that like to have a job as well. They just don't necessarily have the right temperament, but again, it's not about the breed, it's about the dog, like you said. Well, that's a very, and, and you know, I want to uh, say that again, it's about the dog, not the breed. And the thing is about what I think Citadel is also unique about is that you, you can use the smaller dogs. If people want, if they want a service dog and they want a smaller dog, you guys will go out, look to the shelters, see what works for out there. And I, that is what is so unique in, uh, in, in what I think is unique with Citadel. Now, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I don't get the whole service dog and therapy dogs, what's certified, what isn't. Can you enlighten the public and me about the differences? Yeah, for sure. So there's definitely some confusion. There's another term just to throw in there, emotional support animal. There you go. Um, so a service dog typically works for the handler in the sense of they have a medical condition or something. They are benefiting their person. So they have one handler generally that they work for. Therapy dogs are dogs that I could take my dog if he's a therapy dog and he would go into state hospitals or a nursing home and they're there to comfort other people. Whereas a service dog works for its handler. Um, emotional support animal is another term. So they, again, just kind of have the one handler that they are generally used to reduce anxiety and things like that. Um, emotional support animals don't have the same public access rights that service dogs have. So they are allowed on transportation, things like a, an airplane or a bus. They're not allowed into restaurants like service dogs are. And is there such a thing as certification or anything? You hear this word, but I can't imagine the government or the laws enforcing certification. So if someone wants to, you know, ooh, 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 and impress you with certification, is there such a thing? There is, in a way. Um, the Government of Canada has been working on national standards for about a year and a half. So there are organizations that are certified by Assistance Dog International, that's ADI. So these are national charities. They have basically the, the gumption, the qualifications, the certification by this Assistance Dog International to put out service dogs. So those are the places that you can go, you can apply, there's generally a one-year wait time before you're actually getting your dog from them. And you know the dog that you're getting from them is going to be a very, very well-trained dog. There are independent trainers um, that will help certify, quote-unquote, a service dog. But right now, British Columbia and Alberta are the only provinces that actually have that certification process. Where you can go to, for example, the Justice Institute of British Columbia, you go through this rigorous testing process and they will give you government issued ID saying, yes, you have trained your dog to this rigorous standard, but as of now there's no national standard, which is what's very confusing for the industry.
And, and that's why, well, it doesn't take much to confuse me, but that, that, that's, what, that's a good question. You've, and so what we basically, there's some provinces that do it, but what we really need is a national, a national society or national uh, accountability for these service dogs. Karen, it's been very informative. Um, you know, it, 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 Citadel does such a great thing. Using uh, rescue dogs and shelter dogs, I truly believe there's a big difference between, you know, they appreciate that they've been, you've saved their lives and everything. And the work that you do at Citadel is great. And thank you so very much for uh, enlightening us. Thank you, Cindy.